Welcome to episode two of Billy Fixes the Sun Spectrum One. Back in episode one, we got the amp in, took a look at it, it looks pretty nice. Now, we're actually gonna have to check things out, but what we did find out was that it was a Dynaco 4, uh, and that a Spectrum One uh, schematic is a little hard to come by. So what I did was, I took a Sun Spectrum 2 schematic, and then I modified it to look just like a Sun Spectrum 1 schematic based on reverse engineering the circuit and the Dynaco Mark IV schematic. So without further ado, let's press ahead. Well, like I said, we're going to look into this uh, and we're going to look at all these parts. First off, let's take a look at what we're looking at. We're looking at the actual amplifier portion from in here. This is uh, where the real work goes on. Everything over here, that's all power supply. So what we have is right here, these components, this is the preamplifier. It's a two-stage preamp. And then this right here is actually divided up into sections. You got these two resistors and these two capacitors and the output tubes in the bias pot. That's all kind of like one circuit. That's your output circuit. Then from here over to here, you have all of the uh, mixer and phase inverter parts. And then this here, this is the tone stack of the amplifier. This is, uh, um, this is your volume control, treble, bass, and contour or like a mid control. So what we want to do first is uh, take a look at uh, some of the, the the resistors. A few resistors in that are important are uh, these big resistors right here. See these guys, these four resistors, these carbon composition, Allen Bradleys. These here have to, these, 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 we, we, got, uh, we got red, purple, yellow, okay? So we're talking about uh, a 270, 270 uh, kilo ohms. And here we got a yellow, purple, orange. So that's 470 or 47 kilo ohms. 270 kilo ohms, 47 kilo ohms. So we make sure that we're set to, uh, uh, make sure that we're set to uh, 400K range here and we go on, we take a measurement. We measure one of these 270s first off. Let's see what we get. 282. Here's this other one. And 262, 63. Okay. And we measure this guy. And we're 42.7. And we measure this guy. And we're 47, about what it's supposed to be. Well, these guys here, they're not too far off from the right value, so they're, they're probably okay. This guy is out of spec. These are supposed to be within 10% uh, uh, of each other, 5% each. They're 5% tolerance. Even though they are silver band, which means 10%, that doesn't mean that they're not matched because you pick them until you get ones that are within range. So that guy's bad. Didn't know that. The one resistor that I found previously was right here. This guy. And this guy's measuring... <laughs> Jeez, I, I got to lower the range here. Hold on. Let me bring it on to 400. Yeah. Yeah, this one here is... Uh, Forty-six ohms. It's supposed to be a thousand ohms. That's that burnt one. So that's gone. There, yeah, bring her back up there. And uh, these are going to be hard to measure outside the circuit because of this big capacitor. This is your power filter. This is the main power filter. We're going to be replacing this because it's just too old. Actually, like the electrolytic caps. There's another one over there too just like it. These ones with the plus on it. This one, 
they they got to be replaced really without even testing them. Don't even bother. Uh, they don't last 52 years in any good shape. And uh, these capacitors, we're going to check like that one, that one, that one, and that one. Well, yeah, this, 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 and this. Those are the important caps in the thing. These two capacitors isolate the, uh, the, the bias circuit from uh, a couple hundred volts. You know, bias is supposed to be a negative voltage. If these fail, your amp just burns up. This one here has to do with uh, uh, a, a, a feedback within the uh, phase inverter circuit, with actually within the uh, mixer circuit. And also, too, once again, isolates things. But you can't, you can't excuse these guys either. Even though they're in the tone stack. And you say, well, it's the tone stack. There's no signal there. Well, yes, there is. On one side of these caps, there's, yeah, no DC voltage for the tone controls. But on the other side, there's over 200, there's probably 200 volts that it, they're keeping away from everything. So they are critical in that respect. Same with this one, you know. Now, these are uh, black cats. That's what they're called. There's a lot of thought that, there's, that these are... Uh, 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 plastic caps, you know, polypropylene, uh, uh, polyester, poly want a cracker, or anything like that. But, uh, and same with these, you know. Eh. But this was made around the time that uh, PIO caps, paper and, paper and oil, was a big thing, especially for high voltage stuff. And so, and they look uh, just like these. And I don't know if they're paper and oil. I don't know if they're mylar. I don't know what they're. I know that they're almost as old as I am. So I'm going to replace every one of these. And then I'm going to test the ceramic. And the mica and the ceramic. These are picoferric. These are very low capacitance capacitors, noise filters. I'm going to test these. If they test close to their value, we're going to run with them. But all these potential PIOs, there, there, are going to go. All the electrolytics, this one, this one, there's another one over here, and this big thing right here, it's going to go. Now, let's take a look at those caps. With the, with the caps, we're going to use a, a different kind of tester. We're going to use this little guy here. 14 bucks on Amazon. Let's see how it works. Let's hook up the first cap. Let's get one of these point ones. And let's see what it says. And 134 nanofarad. That's not bad. ESR 14. That don't mean much. V loss, 1.3%. That's kind of high. Okay, let's go for another one. Let's see, let's go for, for this guy right here. Hook on there. Hook on there. Give it another test. Yeah, one, 141 nanofarad. That's almost 0.1. Yes, I don't mean my V loss, 1.3%. Not great. Should be almost nothing. Let's try this guy. All right. And we got yeah, about 50 nanofarads, that's right. And 0.4. Still a little high, but not bad. Let's uh let's go for this guy right here. Let's take him and let's find its other lead right right here. There we go. See what we get here. These are tone caps. Now what do we get? 89.7. No, it's not 89 nanofarads. And it's got a V loss of 20%. Well, that cap is not feeling too good. 
How about this guy? All right. And we got 64 now. No, that's not right. V lost 16 percent. Yes, this cap is not feeling well. And uh, last guy here. It's way over here in the preamp. Let me hook this up. And we got uh, 0.9, 114 nanofarad. That's about the right value. Seems the black cats are better than these guys. These guys are, oh my God. <laughs> we're going to have to replace, we're going to replace all these things. I just had to take a look and, 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 and check it out. So what I got to do is I got to order up some Order up some parts, so we'll get right down to that right now. Yeah, this is a direct drop and replacement as you see. Dynaco SD70. Yeah, it's the same kind of stuff. So I have one of these. Axial lead, electrolytic, and uh, I don't care about that. Let's see what we got. I don't know that I like really have this laid out too much when you're looking for a certain voltage range. 160, 33s. Yeah, I, know, I want a range of gaps. Wait a minute, what's going on here? These look like my guys. Good fresh. <laughs> See what we got. See, I need a 50. They say they're high quality, so we should be all right, right? Just, what do you do with those? We got a 250 in there. We got a 220. I need one of those. We'll get that. I'll go back to capacitors again. Axial lead. We'll say film. Okay, yeah, here we go. Yeah, you just got 395 a piece for cast first. So those, it, it doesn't really, you know, it's all superstition. There we go, what do we got? We got point ones? Point ones. We want uh, three of those. We got uh, two of these. We got uh, two of those. We gotta go for switches. Switches. Okay, that's gotta be our big selector switch. We're gonna add one of those. And that's about that we need a knob for it. Jackson plugs. 12A. Two lights. Ah, there we are. Okay, I think we have our order ready. Oh, wouldn't you know it? which is known to the state of California to cause cancer. <laughs> Two of the items. That's the multi-part can, uh, can cap, and the power cord. <laughs> well, we're going to live dangerously on this one and go ahead. Well, look what just arrived. Got some parts, bunch of capacitors, switch connectors, and a power cord. Now let's take a look at the, let's take a look at what we got here. Uh, oh, geez, bunch of parts. There we go. Let's see, we got capacitors. Keep those over there, there, there. There's more we have to do with those. Got these jacks. Boom. Got the switch, the knob. All right, we can put those over here. Here's that big cap. Let's take a look at this. Uh, isn't that a beauty? Yeah, so. It's uh, like they made them 50, 60, 70 years ago. Brand new manufactured. It's pretty nice. We got these. These are the electrolytic caps. These are the ones that were high quality, as they said. And I can see from here, this one's an 85 degree C. And this 250 is a... 105 degrees C. This takes a higher temperature than these. 85 is good. 105 is better. 105 is like military spec. But the real thing we need to look at are these caps. Here, let me take these out of the bag. 
These are all those caps we were just looking at inside the chassis. Now, you say, why did you get these kind of caps? Why didn't you get orange drops? Or why didn't you get brown drops? Or this? Well, orange drops or brown drops would be fine, but they don't look cool. These look cooler. <laughs> I mean, these are, these are, uh, uh, polyester film caps. And these are um, non-inductively wound polyester film caps. And they have a property called self-healing. This is something that the old caps didn't have. Just because of the way these... In essence, self-healing, you can look it up to see what it is. But when these fail, they fail as an open circuit, which is safe, at least. You don't want a cap to fail as a short circuit. The other ones... You got a 50-50 chance on whether they're going to short or they're going to open. These ones here, you got a 99% chance they're going to open. I imagine there's a 1% chance they could short, but that's rare. I've never had, in the years I've been using these caps, which are, by the way, Mallory 150s, actually made by Cornell Dubler, or Dubler, or Corny Dubler. I don't know. I don't know how it's pronounced. I've never heard, I've never heard it properly pronounced. We used to just call them corny doublers. <laughs> and these are non-polarized caps. So being non-polarized, it's really kind of important to uh, determine the shield end of the cap, or the outer foil, as they used to call it. Outer foil. The caps that have a band on them. You notice the older caps inside the computer, they had a band on them at one end. That denoted the foil end, or the outer foil wrap which acts as a shield around the cap. You usually put that to ground. Or in a signal circuit, you put it to the high impedance side, to the output from one tube to the input of the next. The band would be on the output from the other tube. Now, the way I do this usually is I turn on my oscilloscope. It takes a couple seconds for it to fire up. Here's the oscilloscope probe. And... It's pretty simple. You just pick an end, clip on, and you clip on the other end like that. And then you grab the cap and you look at it. See that thing? It gets a little bit bigger. When you grab it, you're coupling to it. So now you have to unhook it. And you flip the other way. And you hook on. And then you do it again. You notice that it doesn't deviate as much. That denotes that that's the foil end. So, <laughs> what you got to do, you got to put a little mark so that you know where the foil end is. And you got to do that to each one of these caps. So that when you install them, you install them with the foil end towards the ground. This helps eliminate any possibility of noise. Uh, you know, noise is a, is a problem in a audio amp, and this minimizes it. doesn't guarantee that it's going to go away, but it gives you the best shot at that. Now, what I found was that, uh, ah, here it is, that this little thing can do the same job. Instead of hooking up the scope and all this stuff like that, we can use This little $14 whiz-bang pick controller programmable whatchamahoozy multi-tester. Now, it's granted I have a lot of capacitance in the lines, but still, you can see. You can take that same cap. It's got the mark that's, that's showing us the, uh, the negative. And we can just clip on like this. Grab that end, give her a test, and hold on. And we get a V loss of 0.1. So if we just grab this end and give it a test, you see you got a 0.2. That's the high end. The low end is where we had the silver. So you can actually just get away with one of these to uh, check for the foil end on a cap. Let's do another one. Let's grab this one. And you notice I didn't have to swap the leads either. 
I just simply grab that connection there and quickly hold on. And point two. So then I grab this end, quickly hold on, and that's point one. That's our band end. Put a little mark. There we go. And set it aside. Go for the next. This is much easier to check this way. Now, try this one. What we got? Oh, geez. I, 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 didn't, I didn't couple. Hold on. Let me test again. Couple. Point one. Grab this end. Couple. Point one. Oh, see? It's a little ambiguous. Do that again. Point two. Yeah. Now we'll do this end. Point one. That's our band end. The differences are very subtle, but uh, they match up with the oscilloscope, which has always been a, a way to go. I'll do the rest of these caps, and then we'll move on from there. All right, we got the parts. Uh, let's see, what are we going to do here? So many things to choose from. Preamp, this part, that. We're going to do this guy first. Okay. I'm going to do that. I'm going to take a nice soldering iron. Get some solder here. See how we're doing? We're doing good. Let's, uh, let's take this guy. Okay. There's that guy. There's this guy. And now I'm going to pull our wires. There's our wiring. Now Get off the uh, get off these guys here, and then we've got two more ground wires over here. Hey, 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 hey! <laughs> and we are all disconnected. Now let's just there. I think we're pretty good that way. Then we take these. I'm going to twist it. Now, will it come out? Well, yeah. Yeah, it will. <laughs> I had to cut the tabs off, but we got it so that the capacitor comes out. Now, let's put in a new one. Make sure it's the right orientation. There we go, like that. And we slip it in there like that. Now what I want to do is bend these ears over just a little bit. There we go, pretty solidly mounted. There we go, that one's soldered in place. Now, I want to take a look at these resistors here. So, let's bring up our meter and see what we read. Let's see what we get here. We get, uh, yeah, 21.9. That's pretty good. It's supposed to be 22. And we get oops, held it. Lost it there. 
Let's see here. Come on. See, I try and make this try and make this easy for you to see, and it's difficult for me to work on. It's all clumsy. But uh yeah, 48 points. We're 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 doing good. These two resistors are in good shape. We can reuse them. So Okay. Everything looks good. Now, seeing as I don't see so good, let me take a look here. Now, we've got this ground connection. This takes a little bit of doing. Those are on. And we've got this last little ground. Okay, but we ain't going to solder that one yet because we got to deal with these. This one and this other one over here. Yeah, let me reposition so you can see better. I think you can see it now. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, this one and this one. The modern replacement <laughs> is a little bit smaller. These are actually rated even higher value than these. <laughs> and uh, let's see, minus to that way. So, yeah, we got to put it in that way. So, let's get these out of here. Now, that don't fit in there very well. So, we'll take a little strip of this foam here. And we'll place it in here. Oops. Once again, I want to check what I'm doing so I can see good. Uh huh. Well, I'm not going to solder this one right now because. That's one. Now for number two. One last little thing we're going to do is to assure these things stay tight. All right, we're both in. So we want to do a little, little beep testing. There we go. Yeah. So let's see. We want to check the, the A, and we know that comes over to here. To the uh, oh, you can't see. Well, let me move it over here so we can see better. Very good. Oh, so what we want to do is we want to check the A, which should be coming out of here, and that should be here. good. This is the uh, B. And then it appears a couple places. It appears over here for the phase inverter. And it also appears right here on the uh, preamp. And then we go for the C. And the C only goes to the pentode. Okay, doesn't cross over to there. Nothing, everything's fine. Well, this puts us at a break point right at the moment because 
we've replaced all the power supply parts. So we, at that point, you have to test the power supply. So, so that's where we're going to end this episode at the moment. I'm going to get it set up on the test bench, and we're going to get testing. And I'll see you in the next episode.